Hi everybody, I'm Ryan Rutledge. I'm the Director of Controls here at Accurate Suspension. And today we're gonna to talk about a super common topic and that's height-based leveling versus pressure-based leveling. We get the question all the time of why we don't show bag pressure. One of the reasons is our height-based system doesn't read it. What it really reads is the distance between the body of the car and the control arm. So we never look at what the pressure is inside of the bag. Now, that can change. So when we look at pressure inside of the bag, what we're really looking at is corner force. So how hard the spring is trying to lift the car up on each corner. When we really dive into it is using a traditional height sensor. What this does is it measures the angle of this arm that moves with the suspension. So we're not looking at spring pressure, we're not looking at how hard each corner has to lift. We only go to exactly that height. What that means for you is if you throw, you know, three friends in the car or you have a full tank of gas, it doesn't really matter. It's gonna go to the same height because that's what it's measuring. What this is really good for is if you want really, really consistent heights. This car, for example, will maintain plus or minus an eighth of an inch without a problem. And what that's really good for is if you wanna drive low. So if I wanna be able to roll down the highway at this height, this is the way to do it. On the other hand, you can do something similar with a pressure sensor. What a pressure sensor is really measuring is how much force it wants to lift up with on each corner. Now, that means if you put more weight in the car, if you put friends in, gas in, your gear in for the weekend, it takes more force. So you either have to manually adjust it or go to a different preset that raises your spring pressure to lift the car back to its height. So what helps most people make this decision between height and pressure is getting down to the install. With a height-based system, you have to mount this sensor on the body and you have to set up linkages to go down to typically a control arm or trailing arm to read what your actual height is. For some people that can be a little challenging, sometimes it involves custom brackets, it's just a lot more effort. With a pressure-based system, if you're running one of our classic VU4s, you can just screw the pressure sensors in, or if you're running VTs like I am, you can put them in line with a T. What this means is there's way less drilling, way less tapping, way less fabricating and bracket making, it is much simpler to install pressure than it is to install height. Height gives you higher accuracy. Pressure gives you a quicker install and a little bit lower cost when you put your system in. So right now the car is sitting in position two, running a pressure-based system. The rear is sitting at about 61, 62 PSI spring pressure, which is my normal ride height. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit on the trunk, I'm gonna add weight to the back and it's gonna drop down and then it's gonna drop down again to get down to its spring pressure. And the reason is I'm adding weight, which means the corners need more force. So when I sit down, we're seeing it drop. So now my spring pressures went up to like 67 to 70 PSI. So the car is gonna make an adjustment and it's gonna go down to compensate for that. The way to get around that with a pressure-based system is to go to a higher preset. So by doing that, I brought the spring pressure up to 80 PSI, which raised the car back up and compensated for my weight. Now when I get off, the car is much higher than I want it to be. That's because I have more spring pressure than I need for my ride height when there's nobody in it. So now I can drop down to my position too. Now this is unique to pressure based because it's not trying to go to height, only to a spring pressure it can't really compensate for changing the load on the car and putting people in and out. So you end up having to have more presets or manually adjusting to get exactly where you want. I've converted the car over and now it's sitting on height based, it's sitting at my position two, so my typical drive height. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit on the trunk, add a bunch of weight to the car. What you're gonna see is because it's reading the height sensor, it's gonna come back to the height it was supposed to be at the first time. Regardless of what the spring pressure is, this system always wants to go back to height, which is really nice if you're gonna have a lot of changes in load, it's your daily driver, or if you wanna be able to maintain really low ride heights. This system adjusted, it went back. We're sitting right at my target of 57% height in the rear. And now it's gonna do the same thing it always does. When I get off, it's gonna see that the height is too high and it's gonna make a down adjustment to bring it right back into height. Again, it's not looking at its spring pressures, it's only looking at going to exactly this height from the fender to the ground. And how it's doing this, it's looking at this ride height sensor, which on this car I have one mounted to the body and one mounted to my lower control arm on each side. 
and it's trying to put this sensor at the same angle all the time. So if this is 50%, even if the car is too high, it wants to go back to 50%. That's how the height-based system works. It is always going to be true height, regardless of what it needs for spring pressures. Hopefully this video will help you make sense out of height-based leveling versus pressure-based leveling and why you want one or the other. But to break it down, here's the real pros and cons. Height-based leveling. The pro is that it's the most accurate setup you're gonna get. If you want to ride low, if you want to not worry about it, height-based leveling is where it's at. The downside to height-based leveling is it's harder to install and it's going to be more expensive. The alternative is pressure-based leveling. This is going to be accurate to a degree. It's got some trade-offs to it, but it's going to be cheaper and it's going to be much, much easier to install. This is, you can do it really easily in a weekend, a little more involved. No fabricating, no real cutting or tapping, making brackets. That's the difference. Starting soon, you'll be able to order your E-levels either height-based or pressure-based. You'll be able to switch back and forth from the app depending on how you want to use the system. And for our existing customers with E-Level Plus, you're going to receive an over-the-air update that turns on pressure-based leveling. We've listened to our customers. This is what you guys have asked for and we're here to deliver it. As a new company, we want to do what's best for you guys and this has been the answer. If you're looking to place an order for an E-Level kit, parts, pressure sensor harnesses for your old system, please reach out to us. You can find everything we're offering at Acura.com or you can reach out to sales at Acura.com and we'll be right with you on it.